All right, give Sister Sherry a good hand. Let's see what she can do. Amen. Okay, so I was thinking about a bunch of different topics to talk about. I was actually preparing a totally different message. And then in the middle of the whole thing, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to scrap it and go in a whole different direction. There you go. Go ahead. So, go ahead, what I want to share with y'all is, um, for those of y'all who Facebook, it's just like uh, being in here except it's online, right? It's yeah, people right. talking and saying all their stuff. So I recently saw a conversation on Facebook about the rapture. Go ahead. Now, for any of y'all that knows, when you talk about the rapture, there's fixing to be an argument. Yeah. It's fixing to get heated. It's fixing to get ugly. Okay? Well, this is what happened in this particular conversation. Okay? There was a guy on there, and everybody was all talking about the rapture, and, you know, we're going to get out of here, and it's pre-tribulation and all this thing. Yeah. Well, then he got cranked up and but for to steal and kill and to destroy. That's him. Okay, that's I'm him. stopping Come right on, there amen. because that's who I'm talking Come about. All right? All right, so if he can get you to feed on something that ain't the word and entertain it, the next thing you know what he's trying to get you to do is go around and get others to chew on it and take it and accept it and take Come it on. in, okay? So if you're trying, trying to find out what the truth is, remember you've got to seek the truth. Who is Jesus Christ? Yes. He's the truth. And remember, He is this yes. Word. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. Okay? And so the thing is, His Word is true. Yes. And I'm going to turn over to 2 Timothy 2, 15. And we're going to look at something that also applies to people trying to throw you off. 2 Timothy 2, 15. This is something that a lot of people don't do. They like to sit in church and talk about it, and then they go home and they crack their brother Bible up on the shelf or wherever, and it collects dust. I was just as guilty when I wasn't walking with God. You could come up with your finger and write your name on my Bible. Okay, it sat back there. I had it. I didn't do nothing with it. That's not what God wants us to do. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you've got that truth down in you and somebody starts popping off like that in a conversation instantly, you're going to know that's off. That ain't right. If you've got this word and you've studied it and you've fed it down into your spirit, okay? Sometimes when another Christian is telling you something, automatically your Holy Spirit, it's like he's uh, putting up a stop sign. He's putting up those red flags and he's telling you instantly that ain't right. Okay. And you know it. Whether you say anything to them right then or not, your spirit inside of you is telling you, uh-uh, don't take no part of that, that ain't right, okay? And it doesn't mean that that person's not a Christian, because I even have to tell myself that, even the people behind the pulpit mess up. It doesn't mean they're not a Christian, but you don't want to be where they're constantly doing that, where they're just totally off track, then you don't want to be following and listening to that person, okay? Now, um, it can also happen with somebody who has a lot of people following them, okay, the devil really wants to get them because a lot of people out there in those big congregations, those big uh, mega churches, those people that don't even care about their Bibles, whatever, what they're doing is they're hanging their hats on that guy. Come on. I'm trusting him, what Come he's on. saying. I believe That's it's right. him. That's and right. then if the devil can get him to go off on some crazy thought, some crazy tangent that ain't got nothing to do with this word, right. then he's got all of them going right along there with him, okay? And that's what he wants. That's what he's looking for. So, um, Especially those that are sitting out there, they don't have a strong walk, they don't have their faith going, and all they're doing, they're depending on that person to lead them spiritually. And they're watching them, and they ain't supposed to be watching them, they're supposed to be watching Jesus and holding hands with them, okay? And so when you start hearing things that are not right, you don't keep listening to them. We all mess up here and there. That's a flesh man. That's part of it. But if that person is off track all the time, you should get away, away from it, okay? Yeah. And I'm still right here in 2 Timothy, and I'm just going to slide down to verse 16 through 18. Boy, and this is why. This is and this is why you got to quit listening to that stuff and stay away from it. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, okay? Yes, will. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is... Hymenaeus and Philetus, okay, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrew the faith of some. Y'all see that last part? Yep. And overthrew the faith of some. That's yes. the goal. That's the ultimate goal is That's to get right. them away from Christ. It's That's to good. deceive them and drive them away. Okay, if they can follow that one person who he's feeding into. Uh -huh. And any time you're in doubt about something, well, first let me back up and say, that the same is true when the truth is being spoken. Your Holy Spirit bears witness with that. He yeah. tells you that's true. And He honors that, okay? 
And um, when you're in doubt about something, we have to get in the Word of God for ourselves and pray and seek Him. Okay, if somebody read that conversation and they thought there's two people and we don't know which one's right, get in your Bible and pray. Yeah. God will show you. He's not going to let you be out there wandering lost. Okay, and um, if you have, I have a friend that's always concerned about me being a false teacher. There's nobody more concerned about me being a false teacher than me. All right. Okay, because I know you're going to have more to answer for if you're standing there and you're leading people wrong. All right, Amen. so I want to go to James 3 1 in regards to being a false teacher. One Pastor's day. got me nervous back here. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, I gotta hurry up. Um, James 3, 1. And it says, My brethren, be not many masters, that means teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. You don't step into a role like that. You don't step into that authority, but that God has called you, first of all. Because if you step into it on your own, you just got yourself in trouble right there because you're going against His will. Okay, He's the one that calls. Is that it? Okay, God bless y'all. Thanks for listening. That's what I do, God All right. God bless you, sister. That was awesome. We're going to start now with number three. Who's got number three? Come on, Robert. Come on, Kennedy. Amen. Work, dude. 
heavens were no different from the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3. And that's all for today. All right. <laughs> Adam and Eve went through some things, didn't they? Didn't they go through some stuff? Amen. One word, disobedience, never pays off for the good. Amen? Amen. How many knows that obedience is the right thing? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you, Kenny. That was mighty good, darling. Thank Let's see. He was number three, right? All right. We're going to call for number four. Number four. Coming out. Shoot number nine. Sister Wilson. Give her a good hand. Come on. Give her a good hand. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, uh, I believe the Lord orchestrated this, what she was telling about the rapture. And uh, it came to me before yesterday or today about uh, how the Lord's going to come. And I was reading in 1 Thessalonians 5. He says, But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that yeah. I should write to you. That's it. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Yes. Amen. Come you on. know what? We're not we're not just normal. We're not looking for him. We yes. gotta be filled with the Holy Ghost yes. continues. Amen. Every day is a new day. Come on. Amen. It says, For when they say peace and safety, yes. then sudden destruction right. comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, uh -huh. and they shall yes. not escape. Well, you know, sometimes, you know, these labor pains we're seeing now about Jerusalem, he said, when you see Jerusalem come past about with armies, then you yes. know that your redemption draws nigh. And, and you know, a lot of people say we're going to go through tribulation and everything like that. I don't know, a lot of them, you know, our Bible's got three different versions of it. Uh, 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 Pre-trip, post-trip, middle-trip, yeah, you know, everybody... Right. You know, you can argue about things like that till the cows come oh, That's it. And but it's still God, you know, He's got a plan that the people just get bits and pieces. Yeah, that's right. But still we don't know absolutely. I don't yeah. think nobody knows exactly no, that. Now right. I may be wrong, but well, you know, I just that's what my uh, you know about it. But you know what I do? I am concerned about young comfort. Now see that's what turns people away. Yeah. Madeline O'Hara said she uh, turned, she became an atheist because she saw the differences in the gospel. Sure. Well, that was just her opinion, her you know. Opinion. But the thing about it is, that's what could happen to these young Christians that you were all speaking about. That they don't know. They don't. My goodness, they don't argue and act like that. I don't yeah. want no part of that. That's right. And that's you right. know, that's what the. the, the People don't realize that they're being used as in yes, instruments right. of yes, the devil. Yes, right. The Bible says, to whom you yield your members to, that's whom yes, you're a servant of. Yes, sir. And you know, lots of times, I'm the old You know, lots of times, you know, of times we uh, try to uh, minimize it and everything, but you know what? I know we walk in the flesh like, uh, uh, all the time because Paul said we walk in flesh, in flesh but we don't war at Right. And Jesus, He's going to come in an hour as we think not. And you know, I think about myself because, you know, we're supposed to be ready every day. Every day. This may be the day I that mean, Jesus come comes on, back. Come on. And I want to be ready because I ready. 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 You know, just like this city of things happen. Just like me, like to hit a car in a uh, <laughs> parking lot. Well, that upsets me. Uh -huh. And not uh, me, I don't know if it's age or what it is, but he doesn't want to admit that he did wrong. I said, you've got to admit to it or you won't know what you've done wrong. <laughs> you know, but anyway, uh -huh. I guess that's what happens to you when you get 76 going on 77. All right. Is that a warning? Help me, Lord. But you know, you just not as alert and you just... Yeah. I don't know, I get, they said, one guy told this pastor, he said, you know, you're a man one time, but you're a yeah. child twice. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, and you yeah. know, you do get where you just don't, you act like a kid, you don't want to take things no more. I don't know, blind pressure, I don't know what it is. But you know, uh, still, we got to be ready. It yeah. doesn't matter how old you are, the devil will just 
Anything that he can cause Come on now. Yes, he will. To try to divide or things. Yeah, yeah, a will. lot of things that he's not worked out in his life. Right. You know, I, I was brought up with the impression that he could pray hard enough or he fasted long enough uh -huh. and he could just work out anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know when bad things happen to you, he's like, well, oh, that's not the way it works out. <laughs> because sometimes you have to go through them whether you want to or not. Uh -huh. Yeah. You have to put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. And you know, I can I said, Lord, give us a refresh. Amen. I think Lord. every one of us needs a refresh. A refresh. I give you the Holy Ghost. I think if I could get the Holy Ghost like Sister Sue got it that night. Oh God. My Lord, oh. I have never in all of my born days seen anybody that received the Holy Ghost like Sister oh, she Sue. Got good. I mean, I've seen them slain in the spirit, but I've never seen them that drunk. I mean, she was drunk in the spirit. She was drunk. And you know what? That's what gives us that hope. That's what gives us that joy. We need a refreshing. We need a We need the anointing. The anointing is what destroys the devil. Yes, it is. The anointing. And you know what? When you get old and you start taking medications, they have side effects. They uh -huh. mess with your mind yeah. and everything. But you know what? If you want to live, you have to take something. Uh -huh. Come on. Because if your faith is not up there, you know, right. I'm telling you, if a lot of stuff is going out and preaching about this financial thing, uh -huh. that's not. It may work for them, but it's just like Paul Crap said. One time he said, everybody wasn't called to be a millionaire. That's right. You know, it's just like Donald yeah. Trump said, you got to have it up here. Yeah, there you go. And you see, if everybody was, the, well, you know, just take the least of the poor, you're going to have all of it. And I know that's not an excuse to be stupid. Right. But the thing about it, these uh, people have their limitations. Yes, they do. And some people don't desire that. That's right. That's and right. But you know what? I know God will supply our needs. Yes, he will. But you know what? I believe wisdom. What we need. I look back over our lives. You know, we could have been very wealthy if we hadn't made some stupid mistakes. Yeah, couldn't we though? Very wealthy. Could we and uh, but I just, you know, you just think you're gonna have good health though? That's forever. Right. That's right. But you know the guy. I don't care what these people talk in 120 Come on. years. Come on. I'm telling you what. I don't know very many people still there. A day to die when it's 70 years old. Uh, it's what you go through sometimes. Yeah. He was a warrior. He yeah. gave his all. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're going to die. What, what does it matter? 70 or 9? What does right. it make any difference? And you know, I got to think about it. I don't want to live to be 120. That's right. I do not. I can might outlive all my kids. And who would I have to comfort me? Right. I think oh, that God has got it all worked out. Hey. And I, I just thank the Lord. He's so good to me. Yes. I'm telling you, it's just, it's so wonderful. I think about all the mistakes I made. Mm -hmm. I've had a terrible time with the temper. In our family, it's the generation uh -huh. of earth. And I'm telling you, uh -huh. you just when you think you got Go that ahead. thing under control, Go oh, it'll come out like a jumping jack. Yeah, if you don't watch it. And, but you know what? I had seven brothers and seven sisters. Uh -huh. And it's hard to keep from defending yourself. <laughs> you had to get tough or die. Yeah. Amen. I mean, it was just hard. Amen. And when your face got on the farm, you know, you just, you know, uh, you had to work. Yeah. And uh, it just, it, you, you just had to be tough. And, you know, I think about Israel. I feel so sorry for those women having to go to war. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I said, this, you know, it's such a small country, they have to have everybody armed. And, you know, uh, like uh, on the farm, I don't care if you was a girl or what you were, you did what you could do and sometimes what you couldn't do. That's right. And uh, it was just a survival thing. Survival. And that's what it is over there. But my heart goes out to them because I know I had to work last time. Yeah. Kind of like a man. And I know that's tough for me in a lot of ways because I don't have, I don't feel too sorry for people that don't want to work. Right. And, right. you know, in right. our younger years, I just don't feel sorry for them. No. Nope. Because my daddy could not stand, even though he was a Christian, he was a preacher, he couldn't stand a lazy person. No, 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 and he no. didn't want nowhere around him. Amen. And he was not going to no, no. raise any raise lazy kids. Mm -hmm. And do you know, even though we didn't get a lot of education, 
You know, every one of us is done for our I tell you, even my sister had a man who wouldn't work. He was kind of mental. Like, but you know what? She paid her time. She yeah. had her a brief home. Right. She lived better than a lot of the people. Oh, you know, yeah. you oh, see yeah. what tied? Sure. It's like I heard, I heard that Arlene Ricky say the other day. She was a single mother. Her husband committed suicide. Anyway, she didn't tell that part. Said right. even. And she said that Paying tithe is a safety net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, yeah, our, she, yes, my yes. children said, boy and girl, said they got good companions and they got to go to college. Uh -huh. Now, I'm, she attributed that to paying tithe and doing, you know, what she's yeah. been given and doing what she should do. Well, you know, I, I tell you what, I just think this is a, let me read this one more about uh, uh, verse 5 in 2 Thessalonians 5 and 5. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Right. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith yes. and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. And that's what we need to do every day of our life. And you know, the devil wants to just get us aggravated and get in the flesh instead of trying to knock us off focus. And you know, the Bible says, keeping your eyes upon Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He, there he goes, thank Lord. <laughs> Let's give Sister Wilson a good hand, guys. Isn't that good? Amen. Thank the Lord. Sister Wilson, that was good. For a woman that didn't have nothing, that was pretty good. Next, Sister Slaughter. Hey. All right. Give Sister Slaughter a good hand tonight, folks. Let's all bow our heads. Father God, I come humbly before you, throne, and I ask you, Lord, right now, to bless this lesson and let me get it done in the 10 minutes, Lord, because I know you gave it to me for us tonight. And Lord, I just thank you that your work did not come back forward in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Tonight I'm going to teach on humility. What does humility mean to you? To some it means to walk in public with your head up high. When shame and embarrassment has come to stay definitely. To some it might mean feeling worthless while being forced to accept handouts. When work seems to have led to sin. To some, it may mean enduring painful circumstances for years at a time without relief. To some, it might mean to endure learning disabilities while others around you speed ahead with little effort. To some, it might mean enduring criticism from peers at work, no matter how hard you struggle to try and keep up. To some, it might mean never feeling accepted, never feeling good enough. To some, it might mean taking demeaning jobs, even though you're way overqualified for many other jobs. To some, it might mean taking less pay just to keep a job. Wow. To some, it might mean enduring abuse quite quietly while nobody else does it but you. As we see tonight, humility comes in many forms. Yet Jesus says we must come to the Father only as a child. Humility plays a large role in a Christian's life. We must learn to humble ourselves at the sight of the Lord. When the devil comes in like a flood, the Lord will always raise up a godly standard. Yes, Many times we're faced with decisions that affect us for the rest of our lives. Some choices we make are for our good, and yet some choices are to our own undoing. The Bible says there's power of life and death in our tongues. Proverbs 19.12 Humility and pride goes hand in hand. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Proverbs 22, 4. It is easy to think that we only have to humble ourselves before God. Yet it is humility towards others that proves our humility before God is even real. It will be the only proof that humility has become our very nature, that we actually, like Christ, have made ourselves of no reputation. When in the presence of God, lowliness of heart has become not a posture we assume for a time when we think of Him or pray to Him, but the very spirit of our lives, it will manifest itself in all our bearings toward our brothers. The lesson we must learn 
in this is one of deep importance. The only humility that is really ours is not that which we try to show before God in prayer, but that which we carry with us and carry out in our ordinary conduct. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me. Yeah. Matthew 25, 40. Timothy 1, 5. When I call to remembrance the unfinished or sincere faith that is in me, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it is in thee too. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. For self-discipline. 2 Timothy 2.24 And the servant of the Lord must not strive or struggle, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach with patience. Timothy 3.3 3, Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, without self-control. Fierce despisers of those who do good. God expects us to adhere to the word. He expects us to live it to no matter where we are, even behind closed doors where the world cannot see us. He knows humility drives each of us to return to the sins that so easily besets us. The Bible says it's the little boxes that spoil the vine. In other words, the little holes in the fence that let things that are worn against us to enter our thoughts. And if we do not take captivity of those thoughts, they turn into seeds of regret. That's because it. we do regret doing them, yeah. they're often yeah. do it. Yeah. God help us become moral warriors as well as fleshly warriors. Right. The world says if it feels good, go do it. Yeah, that's what it says. The word says, be ye holy and work needs. That's right. Meditate upon the word of God. Think on good things. Learn to push unholy thoughts away. Stop watching movies that feed your mind with unholy behavior. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. What you feed on is what you actually eventually will come out. That's right. So you better guard your spirit wisely. Become a fisherman like Jesus told the disciples while standing on the shores of Galilee. Take up your nets and follow me. There are three essential lessons in fishing. I'm going to give you guys a fishing lesson tonight. I hope you never forget. And you women too. And you too. Number one, you have to desire to fish. A successful fisherman may fish for pure love of the sport, or he might fish for a living, but in any event, he must be intent upon catching that fish. Yeah. Two, tackle and bait. Think of it as preparing for a fishing trip. Prayer and Bible study are most important for preparation and Christian witnessing. Hebrew 4.12 and Isaiah 55, 10-13. Your own words might fail, but God's word cannot return to him void. That's right. It is the sword of the spirit, quick and powerful. Yes, so that's your bait, your tackle. A place to fish is number three. Sometimes fish are scarce, and sometimes they're very plentiful. There are spiritually needy people all around us, and at all times. There is no closed season. Of all Christian work, personal witnessing is perhaps most neglected. Yet of all work, it is the most vital to the extension of God's kingdom. Places of fishing for souls are all about us. Men and women, young people, working beside you in the store, office, factory, field, on the road, living with us in our own home and in our neighborhoods. If we're fishermen of men, we will be continually on the lookout for those who we can win to Jesus. As soon as we're seriously interested ourselves in the fishing, we'll find our hands gloriously full of the king's business. Every place will become a fishing hole for Jesus. There's three movements of method to fishing. One, the approach. Cautious approach. Let's say you frighten the way. If you know by experience fishing, it doesn't take much to scare a fish away, does it? Right. The Christian witness approaches tactfully. Be tactful, be earnest, be frank, be courageous, and above all, be considerate. Everybody say considerate. Considerate. Right. Come on. Have you ever had somebody come up to you to witness about the Lord, but they're not considerate? Not considerate. They want to shove it down your throat. You don't do that. 
so we have to watch our approach. A good fisherman studies its fish before approaching it. Try to be of help in solving his problems he's having, not necessarily spiritual. Avoid offending him. Show only love and care. Sincere love is a gift of God to give you to win the loss for making a permanent friend of him. So once you want to the Lord, you not only have to want a convert, you want a friend for life. And who doesn't have too many friends? Two, presentation. Successful angling is attracting fish to accept the bait. Arguing is poor angling. Always bring them back to the main issue. Simply, quietly, confidently, accurately, give out of the Word of God. Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. And last but not least, follow up. Always follow up with any new convert. When you've brought one to a decision for Christ, see he makes it his public confession and become some member of some church. Don't leave him dangling on his own. Be attentive, show him an example, allow him to testify whenever possible. This will allow him to disassociate from his old life, gaining strength in his new faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy life. I love you tonight. God's good in you. Amen. Go around and shake hands and tell somebody you love them in the Lord. Say, I love you tonight. I'm glad you came. I love you.
love me like you do. 